Oh, yes, indeed. A Sunday night, a foggy Sunday night here in L.A. Phone numbers 1-800-LOVE-191, 1-800-568-3191. Fax number here at Loveline, 310-854-4455. The show's Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. He is Dr. Drew. He's a board-certified physician and addiction medicine specialist. Doc, you have a good weekend? I did. Uh, kids are all sick, stayed at home for the most part, but that's about it. Now, do you are they flawed or something genetically? I mean, these kids are sick every other day you, you, you know, come you in know here. What? It's, it's, it's a great irony. First of all, when you have triplets, one gets sick, they all get sick. Right. And then we get sick. And right. Then we, and then we give it back to them. Right. And then you come in here and get me sick. And, and then we get sick and you laugh at me when I'm sick. And so that, that's kind of how that happens. And I'm around sick <laughs> are people. Are you sick? Because I'm feeling I, punchy. I've, I've had a little something. But, I, but, but I'm around sick people all the, time, all the time. And I pick it up pretty easily. And I take it home. And so like every two, three months, we're going through something. Now, is that, do you have your tonsils? Yeah. Because I have mine. Yeah. And they say if you have your tonsils, it makes you more susceptible mm, to certain things. Is that right? People, some people. Could you just take the kids' tonsils out right now? No. Do it at home. No. Come on, bring them in. No. I want to make a keychain. Wouldn't matter. If it matter. Oh. <laughs> Did you keep uh, Mike's uh, spermatic cord? Is that what happened? Yeah, I don't know what happened to Mike's spermatic cord. I, I think we uh, we sold it to a hardware store or something. They're selling it by the lineal foot. <laughs> Mike's spermatic cord. That'd be a good band name. So I saw Crimes and Misdemeanors. Oh, yeah. Did you again? again? I saw it. For like the sixth time it's, it's good, huh? this weekend because I needed my Woody Allen bo- booster shot. And a lot of you haven't seen this Crimes and Misdemeanors movie. It came out by, I think, 1990, maybe eight or nine or 90. One of Woody Allen's most poignant yeah. movies. Yeah. A, a very important film. And I'm surprised at all the people that haven't seen it. And I'm surprised at all the people that don't like Woody Allen. Shocking. It's shocking. Yeah. I, I got a quick suggestion for you people who don't like Woody Allen. This would be a time saver. You just get yourself a sweatshirt and say, right, I'm an asshole on it. Because that's what you're saying when you say, I don't think Woody Allen is a genius. I see. It's just like somebody that's so nice that everybody agrees that's a nice person. But if that one person doesn't like him. A-hole. Uh, that's, that's how you know. Right. We all know those people. I've used that as an example. And, and here's what I'm going to say very quickly before we get to the phones. Because I'm all charged up. Because Evidently I'm, you are. Well, because I, this guy is a genius. And, and he doesn't get recognized by the Academy too often. Although, I mean, he gets nominated here or there. And he doesn't show up. And he kind of snubs them. But people in general don't. You know that Annie Hall, which won Best Picture, I think, in 80 or 82? Yeah. Is the least seen best picture of all time. Is that right? Can you imagine that? Wow. What do people have against good humor? And here's the deal. People say comedy is subjective, meaning, hey, if you like Saved by the Bell, if you think Saved by the Bell is funny, right. then it's funny. Right. And I can't tell you it's not. Right. You're wrong. It's not. That's the deal. I get in this argument with my mom every other night. Here's the deal. And I use this example, and I think it works. And you guys can use it, too, if you run into anyone who's into Saved by the Bell. Take art. Take dogs playing poker and, and <laughs> Monet or Picasso. Now, just because you like dogs playing poker, does that make it better? No. No. Monet is better. Yes, yes. Why? Because it's better. We need to have some yes. structure <laughs> in the universe. All right. That's a, that's, a, that's a truth that lies outside of any opinion. Right. You right, like right. dogs playing poker right, better? Right. That makes you a bigger asshole. It does not make it better just because you like it better. All right. So those Even of you I'm who don't you like Woody Allen, use the dog playing poker analogy. I think it'll straighten everything yeah, out. Thank God I like Woody Allen. Uh, <laughs> or at least you're saying it. You know, I'll go nuts. Greg. Yeah, what's up? You're on Love Line. Okay, I have a question for you. Okay. It involves my ex-girlfriend. Okay. We, we were going out. Everything's fine. Everything's perfect. She cheats on me. Mm-hmm. She comes out of my house all crying, saying she's so sorry, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. She she came over crying and confessed, or you found out first? No, she she's the one that told me. Okay, well, you can give her half a point for that. Give her a point for that? Ha- I said half a point. Half a point? Yes. Okay, so, wait, hold, okay can you actually hold on for No, a no, we actually can't. Go okay, ahead, Greg. Okay, okay, I'll stand in line. Okay, so she does that. What stuff. is it, call waiting? No matter what, when a call waiting occurs, people have to check it. <laughs> I know, Greg. Yeah, what's up? He could How be talking many, to the Pope. Which one of your moronic friends do you think that could be? Yeah, what do you think? It's uh, Menachem Begin on the other line? It's probably my buddy Mike. Your buddy Mike, you speak to every day. Yes. Who wants to know if he can borrow your bong? Actually, that's probably true. All right, screw Mike. Now, what's going on with your girl? And then, you know, so she just wants to maintain the friendship, so we maintain the friendship. 
Right. Okay, so everything's everything's going cool with that with the friendship. This was how long ago? Yeah, and then my best friend Mike, the one how, was probably how, just trying to call me. How long ago, Greg? How long ago? This we broke up like three weeks ago. Okay. Three weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Like so my best friend Mike's like, dude, you got to push her away. Got you, you know he's giving me he's giving me some sound advice. You need your time away. So, what did he sent? Did he sense that you were getting close with her again, or something, or, yes, or that you could? Exactly. He okay. didn't want, my buddy didn't want me to get hurt again. Right. So he probably wanted to crack at her. But go ahead. <laughs> no, 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 no. He thinks she's the biggest bitch. Or at least he did. Uh, Never stopped a man from pursuing a woman sexually. What's actually, that? actually, sort of expedites the whole thing. <laughs> she's a bitch. Boy, do I want to nail her. Let me just say something real fast, Greg. That is the difference between men and women. A woman looks at a guy and goes, this guy's a pig. He's an asshole. Ooh, he gives me the creeps. I don't care how good looking he is. I don't care how good he looks in those jeans. He is a, he, his personality is a big turnoff, and I want no part of it. Men can often work the opposite way. Look at her. She's all full of herself. Look at her, that little prissy bitch. Oh, I want her. Man, do I want her bad. <laughs> Isn't there something wrong with guys for yeah. that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, some women do that, too. Wait, wait a minute, sorry. Drew. You I'm just sorry. flung saliva at me. Sorry. Don't wait again. Very Drew, sorry. Let me just explain what Drew just did. He had a popsicle stick a in his coffee mouth. Stir. Well, it's a popsicle stick. He was using his stir his coffee. He pulled it out to make a point, and he flung a thing of, I don't know if it was urine or, or bile. I don't know what it was, but it landed on my hand, and now I'm infected with your kid's diseases. Fantastic. Greg, go ahead. What's that? Greg, that's Mike again. Keep going. Greg. Wow. I think Greg hung up. All right. I wonder if his friend Mike can come across and disconnect him or something. I'm calling that a bust. Well, the All deal right. is when you break up with someone, especially when it's a painful thing, I mean, especially when it happens under those circumstances like them, uh, fooling around on you, it's best to get a little space. Oh, absolutely. I mean, for, if, for him, that was clearly the right move. But let, let me just say, this sort of what you mentioned brought up something I was ruminating about this weekend, and that is to what extent women have, I don't know if I can put this succinctly and easily to understand, but that young women really need to be empowered in our society, that young women want intimacy in relationships, men want the physical act, and young women succumbing to men's desires for sexual intercourse in order to achieve emotional intimacy get a pregnant b no fi no intimacy uh, c crabs you know, they get they they add they get chaos they get the hurt they they act they feel lousy about themselves i mean if we, we teach women how to be empowered to hold out and to realize they will not get intimacy physical intimacy by Excuse me, emotional intimacy by, by pursuing the physical intimacy, which they won't most of the time. Right. So when you say empowered, you mean <clears throat> we must, as, as parents or as a society, and, and especially their folks, right. give them what they need so they don't have to get it exactly. from the guy. Meaning a lot, of, a lot of women, a lot of girls, a lot of teenage girls get involved with promiscuous relationships or, right. or, or get involved not, with not, physical relationships. It's not just teenagers, young adults. Do Early too. and often and in inappropriate time right. periods wrong and things person. like that. Wrong person. Bad judgment. Yeah. All because they want that attention. They want the, that immediate the, the, attention. The connection. They want the intimacy with that person. And they don't get it. They may kind of get it transiently when they're in the act, but the fact is guys don't want that. Right. And it's hard for women to really accept that men don't want that. Right. But it's almost like I'm going to lend you a little intimacy for the 20 minutes of having sex with you, and then I'm going to take it back and watch a little TV. Right. And then maybe next week when I get horny, I can give you a little more intimacy. And the fact is the intimacy that they, they crave can be achieved and would be achieved if they'd hold out. Right. Because the guys would, would develop a relationship. So you're saying more women should take up... Golf. Well, no, I'm not saying that necessarily. Because <laughs> those women don't seem to have a problem with uh, chasing a, men around. Because as a society, we have to educate people about that. I think if young women really understood that, they wouldn't be as apt to, to be impulsive and pursue it in ways that they get hurt. Yeah, but do you think you can really educate someone about that, or you just think you have to give it to them? You know what I mean? I mean, you can't tell them, hey, the reason you're lusting after all these guys, the reason you're sleeping with the whole football yeah. team is because you're missing intimacy. You have to give it to them when they're growing up right. in their environment. Right. So they, they make good decisions. Right, right, right. And, and men need to make good decisions, too, and it works that same way with drugs and everything else. People need to be reared properly so they can make good decisions. Right. June. Yes, this is June. June? Yes, hello. You're, you're on Loveline. Oh, hi. How are you? Fine, thank you. 
My question is, uh, women who have their nipples pierced, can they later breastfeed? June? Yes. Do you have uh, piercings in your nipples? Well, no, but I'm thinking about getting them, and, you know, I have to think about my future, though. I mean, if eventually I do have a child, I would like to breastfeed it. See, Junior's upset already. I know. I can hear that. As I understand, they can. Now, to they what ex- can? Yeah. Oh, but, really? But to what extent it impairs that, I don't know. Oh, okay. So it doesn't, uh, I don't know, squirt out in all directions. Yeah, I, I suspect it can be more. It's difficult, believe it or not, breastfeeding and, and achieving a, sort of a satisfactory breastfeeding encounter with a child is not the easiest thing in the world, believe it or not. Oh, And all right. uh, this probably makes it more difficult. But you ought to talk to the people that do the piercing. Oh, that's a, that's good advice. Okay. All right. All right, June. Thanks. Yeah, she don't want to come out like one of those lawn birds that you see on <laughs> at your neighbor's right. place. Like, but it, don't they have machines that suck? Yeah, pumps. How does that? Now that always looked a little provocative to me. Do, do they have those what everywhere? Depends you're into, I guess, Adam. <laughs> I, what, what, what are you talking about? I don't know, but you're you're putting like essentially like a like a, a plastic yarmulke over the breast. Yeah, it's like a like they do the cows practically. I mean, it's a it's a pump machine. And what do you do that for? I mean, when to you want to go out? Mode. No, yeah, no I, mean, I know that smart guy, but I mean, when you go, why? All right, if you're at work and you, have, you can refrigerate it or freeze it, and it's it's important for the child to get those nutrients. All right, so when or, the, kids, the child won't breastfeed, I mean, many children will not take the breast, and it's a way of getting the milk into them. Oh, really? Bottle, yeah. I thought all kids had to be into that on some sort of innate, instinctual they, they kind are, of level. But sometimes the two of them can't quite get it together and make it happen right. <laughs> Seriously, oh, there, there are people that specialize in teaching breastfeeding. Oh, really? Yeah. I every, would like to be part of that I'm program. I'm sure you would, but every, every obstetrical hospital has one of those. We'll call it Breasts Across America. Nate. Yes. You're on Loveline. My question is for Drew. I want to know what you think about shrooms. Is there, like, any long-term side effects or anything well, like that? Well, I'm not. I, I was reading some stuff just this weekend that suggests that hallucinogens like mushroom might cause something called excitotoxicity that it tends to open up certain channels in the brain that are not naturally opened up and could potentially damage certain pathways in the brain. We definitely think that happens with LSD. It happens with ecstasy. It probably happens with all the hallucinogenics, of which shrooms is sort of a weak or moderate hallucinogenic. So it, so, so it does appear to cause some damage, whether or not it's enough damage to really create significant long-term problems. I've never seen that, but I have never seen somebody use a lot of mushrooms. I've used them a couple of times. A lot, but it seems like a lot of people use them a couple of times and they're fine. But more than that, it's rare. It, to it's see. really not the kind of thing. I mean, there's a lot of people who go, "Hey, uh, let's eat ourselves some mushrooms and then <clears throat> go to Disneyland, or then go uh, go to a juggling clinic or something." Yeah, and so, when you do stuff like that, it's pretty cool. But I mean, I just like don't go out and just do it. You know? Well, it's not good for you. I guarantee you that. I've only done it once, and I was thinking about doing it again, so yeah. I decided to call. Him. I, again, I've, I've seen, talked to a lot of people who have done that much, and it seemed to be okay. The kind of thing I worry about with people that are even exposed to moderate amount of hallucinogenics is chronic mood problems, a lot of depression, and sort of biolog- biologically tre- trending towards depression. And what about that whole family that died, or at least some of them died, just the other week? It was like yeah. last week. Yeah, now, they weren't was, trying to get yeah. off on mushrooms, but they went out, they're, they're making... Uh, uh, S- spaghetti. They're making spaghetti. Yeah. I don't know. You got to feel kind of dumb as a parent if you killed your family Ooh. by going out. I mean, Drew. Yeah. Let's just imagine you go out and pick mushrooms to make yourself uh, your family some spaghetti sauce, and you kill them. Yeah, horrible. Yeah, that's got to be that? tough. Uh. No, you you don't get over that real quickly. Oh. oh. And then every time you go to like the Olive Garden or something, it all comes back. <laughs> Even though I think the sauce she made was probably better. Shelly. Yeah. You're on Love Line. Hey. Um, well, I have a problem, a little problem here. Good. Um, okay, I've been seeing this guy for um, a year. Mm-hmm. And we have just been seeing each other. We never said that, you know, we'd have a commitment or whatever. And, like, a few months ago, I had um, lost my virginity to him, and, you know. And, like, recently, I've been telling him, you know, that I want a commitment, you know, because this whole time I choose not to be with no one else except him, and I told him that. And then, you know, he's, you know, because before me, he was going out with a girl for two years. And then, um, and then he broke, they broke up and then he started seeing me. So he said he wasn't ready for it. And I understood that. That's why I gave him the year. And like now I don't, 
I don't know. I don't know what to do anymore because I want a commitment with him. I just want to be with him. And then, you know, we were getting to that point, but now he's telling me he's confused because he doesn't know if he should be with his friend or not. He doesn't know if he should be with his friend or not? Yeah, well, his, his friend is a girl. And then it seems like he's just playing mind games with me. And Yes, and you're letting him. I know, but see, it's... Here we are. This is a prime example of what I was talking about five minutes ago. Right. Going for the intimacy, giving up physical uh, physical relationship, mm -hmm. getting hurt as a result of the intensity of feelings that that generates, and the guy never having any intentions to provide you with an intimate well, relationship. See, it's hard for me because, you know, I gave him my virginity. I wish I can just give over, get over him like that, but that's something I held close to me, you know, and... Even I if it, 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 yeah, it, but yeah, don't don't cling to that. Besides, I I think in, with today's legal system, we could probably get that back for you. I'm not sure, but there's certain documents, there's some paperwork involved. I think they have that down at the library. It, it, it is more intense though the first time, but be that as it may, it would be intense every time for a lot of people. I mean, it can be terribly disturbing to have that degree of closeness with somebody and then not be able to have it taken away, not be able to sustain it. It's a, it's a major loss. And then for me, it was like a moral thing. You know, I said I was going to wait till I was married, you know. And then I finally thought, you know, oh, that's something I can share with him. And then now this happens to me. Wait, All right. But, but you wait, wait. shared it with him and you had no real commitment with right. him. And I don't want to seem like, you know, Father Flanagan over here. But you guys, I'll do some quick math. You guys went out for eight or nine months. You knew he wasn't committed to you. And you gave him your virginity. In an attempt to. He told me he would. Well, he, okay, he told me, like, when I brought it up a few months ago, he said, oh, you know, well, it's like we're, you know, have a commitment anyway because I don't be with no one else. And. Like, I don't know. And then, you know, he just... All right, Shelly, this is the voice of reason. Listen, people don't change that much. Not from, you know, 18 to 18 and a half, certainly. In general, people have their MO, they have their rap, they have their way of going through life. Some good, some bad. And they don't change, especially when it comes re to relationships. Mm -hmm. So the way this guy is, is the way this guy is going to be. For his next relationship and the one after that and the one after that and the one after that. Mm -hmm. I don't think he's going to commit for a long time. And I don't think he's going to commit to you because you gave him over a year and it hasn't happened yet. Well, he told me that I would be the perfect girlfriend and if he was, when he's finally ready, that... Oh, would, yes. Wait around. Yes. He told me that he still right now wants me in his life. Mm-hmm. I know this is kind of a mistake, but, you know, I still have him come over my house. Right, right. Hey, let me translate, I still want you in my life. Mm -hmm. I still would like a blowjob once in a while. But, see, another thing with that is that, you know, I became like a maniac after the first time, and, like, I get all tense now if I don't have sex. All right, listen, listen, Shelly, you're, you're playing mind games on yourself. You gave this guy your virginity. It's okay. Every, no, there's some sort of uh, there's some sort of universal uh, rule that you can no longer be with the person you lost your virginity to. It is written somewhere. I don't know where, but nobody I know is anybody in this room. Is any of the Love Line staff uh, even know where the person they lost their virginity is? That where I don't know where they are. I think they're in some big tent somewhere, all milling around with name tags that say, I took Adam's virginity in 1979. <laughs> you know? I mean, I don't know where these people are. You just grow older and you don't care. Mm -hmm. That's what happens. Shelly, this guy is going to mess around. He has his M.O., and he is going to keep on doing it for a while. He's not going to change, and don't think you're going to change him. That's where a lot of the problem comes. Shelly, no, Shelly, Shelly, you got to get, get away from the guy. Listen, get away from this guy. It's been over a year. He's not committing. He He's talking about getting together with somebody else to your face. Forget and, this guy. And and the only chance you have at him anyway is just to forget him. And understand that every time you have contact with him, that clock starts running again. It's probably going to take about six well, months to get over it's, this. It's hard. It's yes. yes. It's hard. It's yes. horrible. It's horrible. But yes. soon you'll be jaded. Don't worry. Because my grandma told me. Oh, get into modeling more. Every guy wants a boyfriend smile. I get myself to be in the calendar. And Shelly, Shelly, don't try to put logic behind this. It's not happening. You could you could be in a thousand calendars and a thousand magazines. This guy would not commit. All right? Take a break. Take a breath and you're, find you're somebody much else. You're better than this relationship. You certainly are. All right? You're worth, okay. worth you heard more. it from both of us. We're experts. <laughs> 
All right. When we come back, I well, right now I'm going to go find my virginity because I can I can smell it. I think I heard it out in the hall, and we'll be back after this. Hey, this is Matt Sorum from Guns N' Roses and Erotic Outsiders, and you're listening to Love Line with Dr. Drew and Adam Carolla. Mm-hmm. Uh, phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. That number translated 1-800-568-3191. Fax number 310-854-4455. I'm Adam Carolla. He's Dr. Drew. And we're reading... Uh, on Thursday, I got this uh, thing out of uh, men's, uh, better men's, uh, man, what the hell? Men's Hell. Sorry. There's all these magazines. Yeah. Now, it's really just some good-looking guy with a washboard stomach and his shirt off, and he's usually, like, on inline skates and playing racquetball or something at the same time. I, I, and it, they, they stuff on, like, baldness and sperm production and all that crap. I, I don't know. I'm not interested in that. Are you? Well, no. Do but you read but those magazines? This one, whatever this is, evidently interests you gla- greatly. Well, I, because... Every time had... I've seen you since, I think, Wednesday, actually, you've been clutching this thing. It was... Seriously, you've had, have you let that put that thing down in three days, five it, days? It, it, <laughs> yeah. No, I, I actually wiped myself with the middle page. That's why that's missing. Uh, this is the penis issue. And I was just uh, delighted and astounded. A serendipity, you'd call it. The average erect penis is 5.1 inches long. Now, 0.1. Now, now I was a carpenter. Five in three sixteenths, basically. Close, It's yeah. under five and an eighth. Yes. Which essentially... Is five because no one says right. I'm six two and three thirty seconds. You, you know what I mean? Right. Or tenth? You know what I mean? You're you're six two, right? Right? Or something's about six inches, or something's about twelve inches. This is five. I'm 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 rounding down now. I'm saying the average male penis is five inches. Aren't you excited, Ann? Is long. this wonderful conversation? Yeah. But it, it uh, keeps yeah. going down. It just keeps. Don't it? Go for this every night, though. I know, no, but I, I'm, I'm exactly. I'm, but it's like this it's, thing. This thing. Look at this. Have you seen him without this in five days? <laughs> He's clutching <laughs> this thing over the weekend. Studied. Yeah, I certainly did. It is amazing. And here's my guess. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I think men's penises are a little larger. I'm guessing the guy who headed up the research team, his penis was 5.2 inches. He looked down and he went, "Let's make it 5.1." I'm going to be just that much over the curve. All right, enough of this uh, um, shenanigans. <laughs> and speaking of speaking of uh, oh, just okay. chatting, yes, uh, that last call we had that Shelley again right. exemplifies how much, particularly women, get hurt in attempting to achieve intimacy. Oh at, yeah, at, at, you know, in, in, especially with no foreplay. Well, just you know, at all, it's, it's a, oh, there's oh, got to be a better you way. You mean emotionally? And I, and I, and I you know, you meant you mentioned you challenged me earlier when I said, can you teach people how to do that? I think we can help people understand ways, ch- sort of strategies whereby they can maybe have relationships without feeling the need to have physical relationships. You know what I'm saying? Strategies. Yeah. <laughs> like the woman sitting over some map in like a war room from. Uh, well, that they need to do it that way. They probably do, in fact. And she has like, uh, all right, uh, boobs, you go cover the left flank. Uh, crotch, you. <laughs> all right. So that was good. All right. All right. All right. That just sounded funny. Don't go there. Uh, it's too late. We already went. Elizabeth. Hi. You're on Loveline. Okay. I have a weird question. Um, a couple years ago, I started taking birth control pills for um, to regulate my uh, period. Huh. And. The first brand I was on was like a really high dosage, uh-huh. and I just had this incredibly disgusting but totally real craving to eat chalk. And then as soon as I like stopped taking that particular dosage, mm-hmm. it like I didn't have to eat chalk anymore. I was eating chalk, so I ate so much chalk. Wait a minute! <laughs> like you get your chalk off the off the off the blackboard, that sort no, of thing. No, actually, I figured out through trial and error that the chalkboard chalk is really gross. Yeah. But the sidewalk chalk is really Especially good. if they've been doing long division. Sidewalk chalk was, was good. <laughs> sidewalk chalk? Sidewalk like chalk. Like the big, the big colors pieces too. that you could oh, really? give yeah. your kids. Let me, now, now, you think you've asked me a strange question. Let me ask you some strange correlates to that, those questions. Okay. Did you want, also want to chew a lot of ice? No. Did you have the temptation to reach into an ashtray and chew on the ashes? I wanted something, like, dusty. Right. And I think maybe That's, I thought of ashes. Elizabeth, I there's actually a name for that. It's called pica syndrome. Did you ever want to blow your grandfather? No, no, no. Thank you, thank you, Adam. Thank you. I appreciate that. 
But, Elizabeth, that's actually a hallmark sign of iron deficiency. So I, I have to wonder if perhaps the, the heavy bleeding you were having actually depleted your body of iron, and maybe it just coincided with the time in which you were taking this particular okay, birth control pill. I was, like, severely anemic. Yeah, and it's, and it's called pica syndrome, and people chew ice, they chew chalk, they chew ash, as in the ashtray. Uh-huh. And it's a very strange but highly characteristic syndrome. Okay, and, so, uh, like, now the doctor wants to put me on that same dosage, though. I will not. It, it's not correlated to that particular I, I can't guarantee you it's not, and I have to wonder if maybe it was the combination of the anemia with that particular pill. Uh -huh. I think if you are now replete, if your iron stores are both replete and you're no longer anemic, it would be far less likely to happen, I would think. And, and if it starts like happening, and there's so many pills to choose from. If it starts happening, you can just switch off. Hey, Drew, is there iron in chalk? No, but it's... it's the, no! But what the, kind of cruel joke is that, that the body is playing on this yeah. poor anemic girl? She needs iron to the point where she, she's having these bizarre cravings. Yeah. So what do we send her out to crave? Chalk. Ice, chalk, ashes. <laughs> ashes. How about that? Ashes with nothing in it. Yeah. I mean, carcinogens. Yeah. What kind of cruel joke is that, that God is playing? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I don't know. Why not just get the impulse to kill? <laughs> Or to, like, you know, shave yourself and walk around nude or something. I mean, well, certainly there could be something worse for you than eating chalk. What is that? I thought it was like there must be iron in, in it. Like, you know, when dogs get sick, maybe, they go out and eat grass. Maybe, maybe, you know, God, you're going to, you know, nature, they were, they were eating dirt and maybe there was some uh, So it's just some basin. weird, yeah. something lodged up in the reptilian yeah. brain right, or something. Oh, absolutely. So, but, um, or maybe somebody can tell me. Maybe one of our list, we have uh, great listeners. Maybe they could give us a specific biological Especially explanation. Especially if you butter them up that way. I ate a lot of paste in junior high. Was that mm. some deficiency? You mean Wilmer's glue, that sort of thing? Uh, yeah, Elmer's. Elmer's. Wilmer's. Yeah. <laughs> maybe that's just lack of education. Elizabeth? Yes? Don't eat any more chalk, sweetheart. Well, it's not bad for me, though, I don't think. You know, <laughs> you, I got a better idea. If you're going to eat chalk, why don't you make money? You eat the chalk, and then you get yourself a job at, uh, like, uh, the local uh, baseball park. How would that work? You could, you, could, you could do the foul lines. Okay. They could put you in, like, a wheelbarrow and put a hole in the bottom, and you get the picture. Wonderful. Yes, fantastic. I'm really going in some positive directions tonight, Drew. Indeed you are. Brian. Yeah. You're on Love Line. Uh, I have a compliment for Adam Carolla. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, yes. Hold on. Uh, Mike, get ready with the uh, recording there, just in case it's legitimate. Go ahead. I'd like to say that Adam speaks for us real men and that you're humorous, even though you're a little bit twisted, but huh. you speak for the real men out here. All right. Would, yes? Yes. Was that all? No. You'd I like to elaborate that. even more on that? Did he say something specific that uh, <laughs> caught your fancy? Yes. He did. Actually, when he... He talks about men in particular when he said that men sometimes when they they want sex because we produce millions of sperm. Seventy two million a day, a day I've learned through reading my crappy mail magazine. Exactly. And then you had one where you talked about last week or maybe even a week before that about how we have the head sperm and it talks to our brain that says, Get me out of here. Right. Yeah, the exactly. head sperm. That's exactly. right. The leader of the pack, the guy in the leather jacket. That's right. And he's driving a Harley Davidson. He certainly is right down the old urethra highway. And he's talking to his brain and he says, get me out of here. That's right, Brian. The best way it comes is through a woman. So, he, he, all right. You now have rationale to go out and lead the sort of uh, deviant lifestyle you've always dreamt of, Brian. Exactly. And you have my blessing. But, you know, I just want to elaborate a little more, though, because sex basically is a, is a basic mm. need. Yes. I think that men are more honest in some ways than women because we don't try to read something into a relationship that men is. are more honest than women. Right. Exactly. <laughs> more honest than women. More honest, especially yeah. when it comes to relationships. Because they they don't want the relationship, and that's they'll be the, I'll always be honest about it, even if you know that sex will be withheld. Well. Oh. Okay. No, oh, wait that's a minute. That's different. That's a little bit different. All right, Brian, work out your rap a little bit better. And then take it to the local Red Onion. <laughs> but it's true, 72 million a day. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what are women producing? They don't really produce anything. They have what, estrogen? Mm -hmm. Yeah, progesterone. Yeah, they, they produce like an egg a month, right? Right. That's one egg. Right. We got 72 million sperm, which is a equivalent to their egg, right? Mm -hmm. On sort of the whole reproductive right. uh, scheme of things. Right. So we should be 71, 
and seven hundred or nine hundred nine hundred nine hundred ninety nine nine thousand times more amorous, Ugh. more preoccupied with sex than they. Am I right? Does that math make sense? No. Okay. I didn't think you'd agree with me. Ramona. Yes. You're on Love Line. Hey, you know hi. What? Hi, Drew. Up. Hi, Adam. Hi, Ann, too. I wanted to say hi to Ann, too. Okay. Hi. <laughs> My problem is this. I have a friend, and she is dating this guy. Well, they have a baby now. And they didn't have a baby before, but now they have a baby. And when we were, we were really good friends, we were great friends. But then I started seeing, like, she was totally in love with him, and he wasn't really treating her that well. And I started thinking, well, maybe I was just getting jealous. But then I started realizing she's coming in with all these millions of problems. I was like, why don't you just break up? So finally, after they kept going out, I got the feeling that she was being emotionally abused. Like, I'm taking this class in college, and this woman studies class, and they go about all these ways to tell. So that's the feeling I get. And she tells me all the time that she's having these tr troubles and everything. But finally, like, about last beginning of school year he's like started lashing out at me so finally we decided that we shouldn't be friends anymore and i just see her when i see her around school or whatever yes but now i'm going what do you i mean i know if somebody doesn't want to admit it you can't do anything but i'm wondering am i supposed to just like end the friendship all together am i supposed to stay there for it's like tears me apart to hear her when she tells me this stuff well I mean, what can you do it, to I mean, it, realize? it depends what degree we're talking about because in every relationship just by virtue of the fact that you're in a relationship means you're being emotionally abused to some degree on some level. There's no, I don't care how good a relationship you're in. Gandhi would, would emotionally abuse his wife, like, on, on occasion. Well, I'm talking to the level, like, he tells her, well, nobody even cares about you. Who do you think you'd run to if I broke up with you? Right. You know, he All right. that stuff, and she knows, it's not, she knows it's not true, and she, like, said, well, I realize it's not true. All right. And the guy's a jackass, right? I believe so. I mean, I would like to think he wasn't because we got a lot of... All right, but the point is, is it doesn't matter what you think. It matters what she thinks. Right, but how do you support someone to the end that you help them see it? This is what you, you can only support her as a friend. You cannot be a surrogate girlfriend or squeeze or hoe or bitch or whatever this guy calls her. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He is... He is... This is his wife. Well, you, no, they're boyfriend girlfriend. All right, this is his girlfriend. Right. This is... And it's your friend. You have to just be her friend. And as and, and part of being a good friend is trying to shape people slowly with your own opinions and things like that. I don't mean I don't mean take them like a lump of clay and make them in your own likeness, but I'm saying, you know, give her some of the insights, some of the things you've learned. But you can't you can't come in and do a wholesale change overnight. You can't sit her down, you can't you can't crack a book and, and you know, put the fear of God into her. Just be your friend and be there for her and don't try to to change that much well, because you're not in the relationship. Try, but Ramona, but don't expect it. I mean, your your influence may be slight, and over time, may prevail in some way, or help turn a light on somewhere, and help her gain insight into what's right. going on. But it's not going to make her wake up and have an epiphany right. and understand what you see. It's not going to happen. And here's the deal about the baby. I mean, the baby. All right, now. but listen, Ramona, if you're really concerned, okay. then you have to know what she will and won't respond to. Okay. She won't respond to you coming on strong and saying you got to leave him and take the kid and come stay at my place. She will respond most likely to a slow, methodical, consistent approach. So you have to be patient. Okay, Ramona? Okay. Good luck. Hmm. Fun show tonight. Provocative show. An interesting show. Let me get the phone numbers out. 1-800-LOVE-191. 1-800-568-3191. The fax number 310-854-4455. Fax is like this one. I know a lot of a lot of folks listening to the show are just listening with one ear. I think this guy was just listening with not even, I think it's just like maybe sphincter or something like that. I, I hate to go there, but here's the fax. Adam, please tell us how you lost your virginity to a tent full of people in 1979. Now, if you were listening to the show 10 or 15 minutes ago when I was discussing losing one's virginity, I was saying that 
nobody has a relationship with the person they lost their virginity to, or virtually right. these they, days. They've all been rounded up and put in a tent. And not only, yes, not only do we not have relationships with these people, we, we don't know where they are anymore. Right. So I'm tr- what I was trying to illustrate to our young listener who was worried about this is, unfortunately, it's a sad reality of life that you get on, you get older, and you, you lose track. And the, mo- the person, that, that most important person in your life all the way growing up for, for women and for men to a degree is a person that does not play as key a role as you may have anticipated coming up or as they sort of told you it would growing up through mythology and things like that in Disney films. <laughs> mythology and Disney films. I'm, I'm going to do my uh, thesis on that. Actually, I, I can't do a thesis because I just got out of high school, <laughs> really. All right, let's go back to those phones, Andrew. Yeah, you would say yes. As you say. wish. Yes, Julie and Jennifer, you're on Loveline. Hi. Hi. Julie's over here. It's just Jennifer. Oh, okay. Um, okay, well, we've been going out with these guys, our boyfriends, for a long time now, like a couple months. Long and time. Mm, man. Well, no. Eternity. You're getting the, you're getting the eight-week itch? No. Okay. But, um, like a month ago... We kind of got curious and we kind of messed around together. Mm. Like what happened? Mm-hmm. Like we just kind of, you know, kissed and touched and just stuff like that. We didn't like have sex or anything. Right, you right. Know? Well, then we decided, you know, we weren't going to do that anymore. And we told them because we felt really guilty. But really, what? Guilty. But guilty. It, she 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 said it like she was from Scandinavia. She said re- real guilty. <laughs> no, but yeah, you felt guilty. Yes. <laughs> And so we told them, but now they're not talking to us. They're really mad. Oh, really? Yeah. So it threatened them in some so way. So it's like you're, you're, like, cheating on them? Kind of. Plus, they, they must be very frightened because they know you guys hang out together all the time. Right. So they probably assume that there's more there than you're actually telling them. Yeah. Are these two guys friends? Right. They're good friends. Oh, they're good friends. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Would, uh, would you happen to have their phone number so that we can straighten this whole mess out and you could sleep easy tonight? Um, yeah. Okay, then. I think they're both at Dave's house. All right. Well, Dave, yeah, I think we have his number right here on the uh, Loveline Rolodex. Dan. Ah, there we go. (laughs) Dave. No. Okay. Uh, You want the phone number? All right. We're going to put you on hold, and we're going to come back to you, and we're going to talk to uh, Dave, and what's the other chap's name? Randy. Randy? Yeah, Randy. Okay. We'll get into that. (laughs) <laughs> when we call them. All right, so we're going to put you on hold now. Okay. All right. Uh, we'll see what goes on uh, with Dave and Randy. Eric. <clears throat> yeah, hi. Hey. Um, I'm taking a medication called Accutane, all right? Right. And um, my doctor told me I'm not supposed to drive at night. Right. And um, my <clears throat> my vision lately is getting kind of blurry, but I haven't noticed anything at nighttime. And I'm wondering if I should talk to my doctor and let her know what's going on. Yeah, oh, definitely. But Accutane's for your skin, right? Yeah, yeah but, but it affects vitamin A metabolism, and that's the part that's important in night vision. And it dries, it, it doesn't it dry your skin up? It just basically much? changes the way your glands in the skin function. They, they change permanently after six months or so of Accutane. Oh, really? And the problem with Accutane and is. Your it, eyesight never comes back? No, it all comes back. But it, the problem with Accutane is it can cause severe birth defects if, if a child, woman of childbearing age is taking the medicine. So. Young women typically aren't given it without a lot of precaution. So talk to the doctor. I don't think you have anything to worry about. There are other things that can happen with acne. It can dry your cornea up and things like that. So you definitely ought to, ought to call her to talk to her about it, okay? All right. All right. Thanks. Bye-bye. Yeah, going blind to me falls under the heading of side effect. I mean, of, of serious side effect, yeah, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, the good news is y- your skin's going to look good for the prom. The bad news is <laughs> you're going to need a cane at the prom or, or a dog. I mean, I never heard of that. No, no, he, it, it's transient. The night vision is affected for a while, but it comes back. Oh. But he's saying it, his bl- blurry vision during the day, and so what the heck? That's bad. You Julie, checked out. Hello. Julie. Kimmy. Kimmy. Yeah. Q Q U. What? Just Kimmy. Yeah. All right, Kimmy. Kimmy. Oh. All right, everyone's got a new handle tonight. Hi. Hi, Kimmy. What are you guys doing? Yeah. You had a question on uh, alcoholism and prescriptive drugs? No, not today. Oh, really? Uh-uh. I was just guessing. <laughs> huh. Well, remember, I don't know if you remember this girl called like 20 years ago? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and she said that she, <laughs> she, some guy asked her to have a belching contest, and she was really mad. 
Yes, I do remember that call, yeah. actually. It wasn't 20 years ago. I think it was about six months ago. Oh. Yes? Well, anyway, um, I'm a good belter. <laughs> and I would be proud if someone asked me to have a belting contest. Um, all right, I challenge you. Okay. All right, you, you first. Start? No, you start. All right, well, hold on. Let me let me swig some coffee down and make sure it goes down the wrong pipe. Mm. All right, you ready? Yeah. One, two, three. Okay, ready? Yeah. <laughs> hey, I was that 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 was pretty good, but I'm gonna work up I'm gonna work up something else now, okay? okay. All right. <clears throat> now hold on, let me <clears throat> let me wait. I had uh, I had uh, Pepsi and uh, Pinto beans for dinner. Mm. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna move that along. All right. Ready? One, two, three. What was that? What was that? Yeah. Come on. You want it? <laughs> All right, come on, your turn, Kimmy. No, it's just belting. Oh, oh yeah, no, you don't understand. This is, this is the follow-up to the belching competition. No. Oh yes, belt. you can be disqualified from the belching competition if you can't muster a, a fart up. It's not ladylike. Oh, oh yeah, you, you're practically a marine as it is. <laughs> I'm not a marine. Kimmy. Uh huh. You drunk? Uh uh. Really? Mm -mm. You're like this all the time. All the time, honey. Wow. I don't know if that's good or bad. It's good. All right. Find yourself a nice sailor. Do, do, do. <laughs> Better yet, find yourself a nice therapist and start a relationship. Hello? Uh, I have no idea idea what that was. You know what? We did a direct True. punch, an inadvertent direct punch, so this better be good. What's your name? How you doing? What's your name? Seth. Seth, all right. What's That's your question? Good, you know? What's Let's your question? What's your question? Okay, I got a question about, uh, to Dr. Drew. Yeah. About, uh, if, and, and when you pierce your ear at the top of your ear, yeah. the cartilage up there, mm -hmm. I've heard, like, different stories that if you pierce in the wrong spot, there's some nerve up there that can make you go paralyzed, paralyzed or something like that. I'm not I'm not familiar with that, but I'll tell you what, you get your cartilage infected and the whole thing can dissolve. Oh yeah? Yeah. Wait, your whole ear? The, yeah, the cartilage will dissolve from the inside. It's a mess. Oh really? Yeah. All from the inside? Yeah, it's a mess. You'll look like Nicky Lotta. <laughs> yeah. So there's a so there's a little dangerous. racing reference there. Yeah. It's more better to have it professionally done? Uh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, yeah. thanks. All right. All right, that was quick. And Nicky Lotta was a, a Formula One driver who was burnt horribly uh, in a in a car crash, and uh, his, essentially his ears are gone. Uh, ears are gone. <laughs> but just just another reason why I shouldn't be here. By the way, Doug. Yeah. You're on Love Line. Oh hi. Hi. I have a question for Doctor Drew. Yeah, Doug. Um, I'm bisexual, but I have um, a fear about telling my mother that I am, because when my brother told her told her. That he was gay, she flipped out. Yeah, she should be relieved to hear you're only bisexual. Well, I've been mostly dating girls, but I've had experiences with guy and a girl at the same time. So. Yeah. Well, Doug, I don't think you should feel obliged to announce anything to your mom at 16. No. Uh, absolutely not. Yeah, I think you know the 16 is a time when you really. Most people have doubts about their sexual orientation or at least have some confusion about it at times. And if indeed you turn out to be bisexual, when you're an adult talking to your mom as an adult, and if she needs to know that information, then you can tell her then. Or if, she, or if you feel the need for support for some reason, you have to tell her, well, you know, you expect that she's going to be a little bit... Doug, uh, yeah. do you, when you masturbate, do you walk in your mother's room like you, like you just won the World Cup? No. No. No, and when you when you get the the uh, the family dog to uh, lick you where where he shouldn't be licking you, do you tell your mom this? No. And when you have a tremendous bowel movement, do you do you do you strut in to the bedroom and and and, and proclaim to the world no, that no, you no. okay? Well, there you go. There's certain things not only you shouldn't be telling your folks, but I'm going to tell you something. This I'm going out on a limb. I bet your mom would be glad if you withheld this information. And I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with being bisexual, but you're 16. 
And we don't know where you're going to end up yet sexually. Right. That that the sexual uh, roulette wheel is still going and still going around. You're like that ball bounce around black, white, red, whatever. It's still all over and, the place. And my, and my advice to you, if you are if you are really con- if you're confused, if that's what's going on here, that you hold out and don't have physical relations for a while until you really do figure out who you are and what you want. Right. Uh, you may end up gay. That may end up being your orientation. Maybe at, at 16, it's hard to really g- to come to grips with that reality. Sometimes and that's what sends, tends to. Uh, cause people to, to remain bisexual. All right, but I'm thinking if he can rent the big red one and gone in 60 seconds and watch that this evening, he's going to go back the other way. We'll be back. All right, in just a second, we're back here on Love Line. We're going to get back to uh, Julie and Jennifer and talk to Dave and Randy. We put them on hold about 15 minutes ago. Uh, apparently, Julie and Jennifer were having a little little hanky-panky. Nothing uh, nothing, nothing major. No, just a little experimenting, a little fooling around. And apparently, Dave and Randy, the prospective boyfriends, weren't too thrilled with this news. Now... Most of the time, and we'll find out when we talk to them, but uh, most of the time the reason guys are upset is because they weren't allowed to videotape the the proceeds, the proceeding event. You know what I'm saying? Usually that's where why they're so upset, but we'll, uh, we'll talk to these guys and find out what's going on. But we're not going to get to them just yet. We're going to get to them after our little 10-second ID thing, which is coming up in about 25 seconds. So until then, Drew is going to sing opera. Mm-mm. <laughs> oh, no. Jeez, that sucked. No, not even. Come on. No. Until no. then, we're going to argue over why Drew will no, not share his opera. Uh, just cause it's I, a gift. Yeah, it is a, oops, it is a gift, but it's not a gift to this audience. But you spat on me earlier. Don't I you think did, I deserve it? Yeah, it was the best part of the show for me so far. But I think we had to talk more about some of the stuff we were talking about earlier. Look, my, We'll do it. In 10 seconds. All right, name of the show, Love Line. My name, Adam Carolla. His name, Dr. Drew, board certified physician. The phone number, 1 800 L O V E 191. The fax number, 310 854 4455. And when we left before a brief intermission, we were talking about Dave and Randy and Julie and Jennifer, and we now have them, and we're now going to get to the bottom of this whole sordid mess. Dave. Hey. Randy. Um,. Is this just Dave? Yeah, it's just Dave. Okay, Dave. And Julie's your boyfriend? No, Julie's not. There you go. Sorry, girlfriend? Yeah. All right. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. Drew's punching around. Fantastic, Drew. Are you there? Hello. Hello? Hello. Who's this? This is Julie. And All right. Jennifer. Did All we right. lose Dave? What? Could you guys get him back? It, Drew, don't monkey. Drew's monkeying around with the phone board thing, and he managed to hang up on your boyfriend as if things weren't bad enough. Now we're back to where we were a half hour ago. Mm -hmm. Julie. Yeah? You called Dave. What? You called Dave and told him to come on the air, correct? Mm Mm-hmm. Okay, now he's going to call back theoretically. Or they're going to call him back. They're on there calling right now. Uh Uh-huh. And we're going to talk to him. Now, did you tell him what we needed from him? Not really. I just, I mean, he's, like, really upset. He's really upset, but he agreed to come on the air. I hope so. I wasn't really, he's kind of mad he won't really talk to me. Well, we had him there, so uh, hope, hopefully there's no real problem with that. What's, what's the matter now, Ann? <laughs> what? what? Line's busy. Drew, well, uh, hold on. Oh. All right, this, the wheels have come off the wagon here. We Indeed. had a pretty good first hour. Yep. I think we had to just pack it in right, right now. I, he's on our other line. Oh, he oh. is. Should we go answer it? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, tell him to hang up and get back. Tell him to hang up, and we're going to get right back to him. Okay. All right. We'll get back to you, too, in a second. How about that? All right. All right, let's just go to this one. Oh, this will be quick and easy. Christ's sake, Drew. Robert. Hello. You're on Loveline. How's it going, guys? Well, it was going pretty well until Drew started monkeying with the phone board. Oh, you you got to keep an eye on him. No kidding. How's it going? Good, uh, thanks for taking my call, Adam and Dr. Drew. You're welcome. I'm um, calling regarding uh, GHB. Sure. You know, you're familiar with that? Goob, sure. Gamma hydroxybutyrate. Yeah. Right. Uh, at any rate, uh, my friends and I have been taking it for about a year while we work out. It's good. It stimulates muscle growth. and. Well, allegedly, it may have some growth hormone effect. Um, it, it appears to work yeah. as far as taking it and also having fat-burning qualities. But we also take it as you know, a recreational drug to 
get high. Right. And, Is it uh, back again? Jeez. Yeah, it's, I guess it's making it. Making yeah, it what, what's it do? What's but, it make but, you feel like? It's like taking a couple six packs of beer, really. I mean, it, it's, really? it's very hard to control. It's associated. Yeah, there's a very fine line with uh, how much of a dosage you should take to, to well, catch a buzz or you know go what? beyond that and, you, and can pass out completely. Right. People, comas have been induced, seizures. You can't really control the dose. It's very difficult. But you this look is, better in shorts. <laughs> oh, yeah. Not at those doses. And uh, it, it, it is a potentially quite dangerous drug. It's a relative of the sort of central nervous system depressant GABA. And when River Phoenix died, everybody jumped to the conclusion that this was the drug that, that did him in. Is that right? Wasn't well, it a combination of things? Well, it, what did him in, he was a routine amphetamine death. I mean, that's the way people die when they do a lot of speed. I see. Uh, so but wait, GHB, where do you get this stuff? Uh, you know, they used to advertise it in the back of muscle magazines and things, and people would mix it up and keep it in their refrigerator and give out Dixie cups. That's sort of how it was, it was dispensed. It's illegal, right? Um, I understand it's illegal now, but yeah. I, it was available over the counter at health food stores up right. until 1991. Right. Was and now it's illegal. Right? Where do you get it? Uh, it's basically, believe it or not, kind of like through mail order is one way to get it through someplace out of L.A. And another way is that we can make it. Mm. Oh, really? From what? It's it's not really a difficult process to, mm. to produce. What do you make it from? Uh, you mix it, you basically mixing together uh, gamma butyral acetone, um, uh, <clears throat> what type of alcohol? It's like a dehydrated alcohol, a dehydrated alcohol, mm -hmm. ethyl. Mm -hmm. um, a few other ingredients, I'm not quite sure. But I don't actually do it myself, but I, I've seen people do it. You're saying Yeesh. stuff you got in the spice rack, right? Uh, basically, you can get it all over the counter at science shops or at uh, um, science shops. I would be just like, you know, Poindexter. The, the <laughs> wow, yeah. Something out of Felix the Cat. And the master yeah. cylinder's going to yeah. come in there in a minute. <laughs> But yeah, you can you can make quite a bit at one time. I mean, up to no, are we? I, I get it, but I certainly wouldn't. Even you know, having had a modicum of experience with organic chemistry, wouldn't be dousing myself with anything I mixed up. Yeah, I mean, there are all kinds of byproducts you can make. The purity, well, who knows what? Does it affect your penis? Um, it actually it gives you similar similar feeling to being on ecstasy, but not quite as strong. Uh, you get you get kind of like heartwarming qualities. You open up. To, in public to people, you find yourself more talkative. That's less great. Just a bunch of big muscle-bound guys who are falling in love <laughs> with you. Yeah, well, it's not, it's not quite so much that. Uh, but uh, um, what what we'd heard recently is that by taking this regularly, or maybe in increased dosages or what have you, that it can cause cancer. It stimulates the cause of cancer cells. And that I, was a concern. I, I'm not familiar with that. I haven't. Yeah, I did some uh, television interviews about this drug when River Phoenix had died, and that was what three years ago now. Right. Yeah. And uh, I really have not followed the literature on this drug since. It died out in popularity. Um, the most concern we had at that time was seizures and coma. Uh, I'll look it up again, see what's, see what's out there. I mean, there, there is, will be a price for this drug, I assure you. I mean, they will, they will not go unnoticed by, by Mother Nature. And nothing's for free. Right. Because yeah, the way it had seemed, at least the studies we had read on, there's a book I'd read called Better Sex Through Chemistry. Oh, God. <laughs> Fantastic. Written by <laughs> Dr. Mangala. <laughs> Which... Uh, Talked about it and how it's it's a it's an amino acid. It's naturally occurring. That your body metabolizes. Let, let, let me let me just uh, real Wait, quick. I have a recipe. Well, let me just point out that okay. glutamate is an amino acid that your brain uses to transmit information. In fact, it it it's an, what's called an excitatory amino acid. It, it's a lot of the uh, uh, alertness in your in your brain is due to um, uh, glutamate. You take a lot of glutamate, it will cause what's called excitotoxicity. Your brain is only programmed to be able to tolerate a certain amount of stimulation, and then the cells die. Here's what I want. I want everyone within the sound of my voice to go to their kitchen, and I want them to get out some pride. And I want them to mix a little self-esteem in there. And I want, to, I want to mix a little hard work in there and a little dedication and a little fear of the Lord. I want you to mix that up in a, in a, in a, in a big, come on, can I have some goddamn music here, Mike? I'm on a roll. In a, in a tumbler. And I want you to put in a couple of... I want you to put in a couple frozen pieces of, of, of uh, I don't even know where I'm going tonight. But drink that. Don't go to the damn, don't, don't go to the chemical company. Am I right, Drew? Yeah, of course you're right. All right. You know, I had an angle there. You just lost it. I just lost it. That's the GHB. Uh, is that what that is? Mm. All right. Now, don't monkey with this thing uh, this yeah, time. Yeah, you run it this time. Push twice on that one, okay? No, no Mike's going to do it for us, right, Mike? All right. Dave, Randy. Hello? Julie Jennifer? Yeah. Okay. Now, girls, hmm? be silent for just one moment. Let's talk to the boys for just a second. Okay. 
Wow, they're like twins. <laughs> Dave. Yeah. Is this you? Yes, it is. Okay. Now, what did the girls say they did? Okay, they said that they, well, pretty much had sex with each other, something like that. That's, no, what, you, that's, that's what you heard. That's what you heard. But what did they really tell you? They kind of just, like, experimented. They fooled around a little. Yeah. N not out of a porno movie, but, you know, maybe out of, like, one of those uh, Emmanuel movies. Okay. You know what I mean? A little softer. What would you think of that? The, the, fact that? the fact that they had done this. Well, they felt, like, kind of betrayed. Betrayed. Yeah. Right. But, I mean, just the idea of them, like, you know, sneaking around on, like... Right. Because, because is that Randy? Yeah. Tell Randy to shut up. Randy, shut up. Thank you. Dave, you felt badly because they had intimate contact with someone other than you. Right. Right. Regardless of whether it was an, another male, a female, a pet, whatever it was, right. they had a, essentially a sexual intimate experience. And it must have felt especially threatening since you knew they kind of hang out together. Yeah. Continue to hang out together. Yeah, they yeah. Did you think that maybe more had gone on than they had told you? Yeah. All right. All right. Now, Julie, mm -hmm. let me ask you this. Okay. What if you'd found out that Dave and Randy had just fooled around a little? You know, maybe a little kissing, maybe a little, eh, just a little, maybe like Dave put his hand down Randy's pants and, and groped around a little bit. Maybe just, you know, a little, a little, 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 little tongue action. There, you know, just some good, clean making out. No, no, no sex or anything, but just some making out. How would you feel about that? Probably the same as him, but now that I've done it, I know how the other side would feel. I'd probably be pretty upset, but probably forgiving. You'd be for you'd be forgiving. Yeah, I think so. I like him a lot. And 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 if Dave said, you know, me and Randy got it on just a little bit, and we we're gonna hang out, but don't worry about it. You think that'd be okay with you? Well, if I felt that he still liked me, yeah. Yeah, but wouldn't you worry just a little about him still liking Randy? Maybe a little bit, but I trust him. Oh, uh-huh. I don't know. I don't know if you're completely putting yourself in 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 uh, the other position. You also got to remember one's guys and one's right. It's a little and, different. And I think it would be worse, actually. All right. Why would it be worse? Well, women don't take to men fooling around as easily as men take to women fooling around. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it does mm -hmm. seem a little different. Yeah. Right. All right. So, can these guys, can these guys trust you? Yeah. Well, now they can. We don't. We, I mean, we, we don't didn't do like anything it. anymore. <coughs> it was that one time we didn't even like it. How do we know that? Yeah. Are you guys dressed right now, Julie and Jennifer? Yes. We're in different We're rooms. We're in different rooms. But are you dressed? Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. What's going on? Dave, tell yeah. Randy to shut up. <laughs> he said to shut up. Jennifer. Yes. Dump Randy. Why should I dump Randy? He sounds like a moron. But I like Randy. <laughs> well, maybe something's wrong with you. Dump you. <laughs> you <get a> moron. <laughs> All right. Hey, Dave. Yeah. Dave, where'd you go to finishing school? What? Do you got to tell Randy every bad thing I said about him? Yeah. You do? Yeah. What the hell's wrong with you? Be nice. Dave, be nice. Okay. Let's all be nice. Julie, Jennifer. Yeah. yeah. I want you to tell Dave, and then Dave will relay it to Randy. Okay. I want you to tell them that what you did was nothing more than teenage experimentation, that you, there was a couple question marks that you needed, needed answers to, and that you won't do it again, and that you love them. Okay. Put it in your own words. Right now? Now? No, we'll do it at the, uh, we'll do it at the 12 o'clock break. <laughs> okay, Dave? Yeah? Okay, it was just experimenting. I mean, haven't you ever wondered? I mean, we still really like both of you a lot, and we're so hurt that you won't forgive us. Please forgive us. It was just a one-time thing. We promise not to do it again. You can trust us. Keep going. I mean, we were just experimenting. We were curious. I mean, you like hear about it all the time. We wanted to know what it was like. And Don't rationalize. Apologize. Okay, we're, we're really sorry. sorry. We didn't even like it. It was so much better with you. How much better? A lot. A like lot ten better. Times, a hundred a times. A million times better. Exactly. It, it, it wasn't, like, good. <laughs> Would you vomit if you ever saw another woman naked, Julie? Probably. Yep. I mean, look at how much trouble it's caused. He, he, I mean, he won't forgive me. And, and this a relationship means a lot to me. And thank all you. right. All right. That's enough. I'm going to vomit now. <laughs> Dave. Yeah. Listen, Dave. They're apologizing. Okay? okay. I, I believe it, too. And, and Dr. Drew believes it. Takes, he, a, takes a lot to get me to, to 
yes. consider this sort of thing sincere. Okay? Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, Dave, tell Randy. Give Randy a thumbs up right now. Don't even say anything. <laughs> All right, you give it to him? Yeah. All right, you guys are back on. Okay. Yeah. I want you to put this behind. I'm going to treat this like uh, like uh, the Don in some Italian family. I want you, both of you twos to put both these things behind you twos and get along now, all right? Okay. All right, that's it. It's a done deal. Yeah. It's in the past. Dave, call them back. Okay. Hang up from this call and call them back. Thank you very much. All right. Okay, Good. Bye. Fantastic. Okay, bye. Hello? Bye. <sighs> and whatever you do, don't rent personal best. What's that? It's a, like a lesbian track movie. That's real. It's got everything. It's got a little something for everything. It's got track and field. It's got lesbians. You know, what's in interesting it. though how these are two sixteen-year-olds—they're gone. Okay. Two sixteen-year-olds talking about how they were curious because they hear about it all the time and see it all the time. Right. That that there that there is this quality to promotion of uh, same-sex activity. It sounds like to me, and I, I'm not sure. I didn't wasn't really aware that was out there. I mean, I knew that there's more of a trend towards towards. Uh, you know, sort of non-sexual, or you know, sort of a what's the word for that? I'm looking for no, platonic. No, 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 no. Well, well, don't give me no, 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 no. You said non-sexual. You know, my brain is not working well tonight. Well, mine isn't either. Perhaps we should have gotten someone to substitute for us tonight. Yeah, indeed, <laughs> Scott. Yeah. You're on Love Line. Hi. Hi. How you doing? What's the problem? Okay. Um, I was like. Androgyny is the word I was trying to think. Of. What? Go ahead. Oh, okay. I was. At this party a few nights ago, mm-hmm. and I was hanging out, and there was this girl there. We got to talking, and found out everything was pretty common, and you know, yeah, it was working out real good. All right, you hit it off. Oh, perfect. Nothing and, wrong uh, with that. What's that? Nothing wrong with that. Continue. Yeah. Okay, so just so happens this girl is uh, that's there is uh, best friends with the girl that's having the party, mm-hmm. and unbeknownst to either of us, the uh, girl. Was having this party, I guess, really liked me. Uh huh. And um, like a few days later, me and uh, the girl I met there ended up getting together and stuff, and everything was cool for a few days. And then um, her her best friend that was having that party just totally dumped on her. Uh huh. I mean, just said later. Just went ballistic. Yeah, and well, not ballistic. Just kind of said, "Hey, <laughs> if you're with the guy, I won't like you, or if you're not, I still won't like you." Oh, really? Yeah. Well, problem solved. Well, <laughs> that's not the end of the problem. So, um... Oh, what was that, Mike? I don't know. What the... Something is just, uh... It's not a full moon, is it? Is it? All right, we're going, for good, we're going for a bread and butter call here. Just so the listeners understand, that was the, the, the phone just disconnected right here. Yeah, we didn't hang up on anybody. No, 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 no. no. Oh, yeah, it must have sounded that way. Yeah. No, absolutely not. I, was, uh, I had the best answer I've uh, I ever given. What? What was it? Oh, I, this well, one went too. I don't want to get up. Oh, I think we're having difficulty with the phone lines. <laughs> so, Drew, what about this whole Bosnia situation? <laughs> Uh-oh. Okay. Uh-oh. Are we all right? All right. Let's keep going. Because I'm going to have to sing the dreidel song in a minute here if you don't get this figured out, Mike. <laughs> I had a little dreidel. All right, all right, all right. I made it out of clay. Jason. Hey, Dr. Drew, Adam. Hey. Jason. How's it going, guys? Good. Don't go anywhere, Jason. For Christ's sake, we'd have to talk to each other otherwise. <laughs> uh, first of all, I just want to say that you guys do a fine service to the community. Oh, thank God. I would God. have had uh, a set of you guys on the air when I was in high school. My life would have been a lot easier. Interesting, you would say, because that's sort of the model I am applying to this whole environment. As I, for something that could have applied to what 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 I needed when I was, we don't even your age. I mean, it would it would have helped. Seattle, so uh, but I'm glad to listen to you guys now. Well, thanks, Jason. What's your question? I need a little advice. Two of my best friends that I've been uh, friends with ever since um, middle school, elementary school, are going out now, boyfriend and girlfriend. Um, The problem is that. They insist on having unprotected sex all the time. She won't wear, you know, she won't make them wear a condom. She won't go on the pill. Depro- you know, there's all the options. Right. She's gone through college. She's very well educated. But does she want to get pregnant? That's w- that's what I told her, and she told me that I was crazy. But uh, what does she think? Well, he's going to be going. To, he's he's already finished college, and he's going to go on to his his master's or you know graduate school. And he wants to go to the East Coast, and I think she's a little worried 
that he's gonna gonna get up and leave. Uh huh. So she's trying to she's keep. He's gonna give him something I, he can't pack. That's what I think. But she and she's you know insisting that that's not the case. All right, Jason, you were listening when I straightened out the feuding couple. Right. The Hatfields and the McCoys a few minutes ago. Right. I can do the same thing for this gal. Okay. I think I could even do a better job of it. <laughs> Should we call her? Uh, uh. Yes. <laughs> let's call her. Okay, man. Let's let you know what I mean. Let's let's get these things out now. I and mean, here's the deal: people are frightened because it's a confrontation, right. and I don't like confrontations either. But you know, here's the deal: when we're done, then we're done. Right. Then it is off your chest. It will not eat at you. You don't like confrontations? No, I don't. Why you in front of me? No, what'd you do to my wife on on Valentine's Day? That two was... hours of confrontation. <laughs> All right, that's Adam, different. If you don't that's like your... confrontation, you better uh, you better hide the plants and put the lampshade over the bong because LAPD is coming after you, man. <laughs> no kidding. You better watch out for them. I uh, no kidding. They wanted the tapes of the show from Heidi Fleiss. I know. I know. You better change the plates on the van, man. No kidding. But uh, do you work for LAPD? I I have uh, one of those scanners, and I hear his name come across frequently, so they're on to him. Are you nuts? <laughs> I'm just kidding, Adam. Oh. Let's get back hey, to Jason, this. don't <laughs> screw around that way, huh? I just, I, I just uh, had plastic surgery done in the time you're discussing that. Oh man! Freedom of speech. Hey, the the Heidi Fleiss thing got him kind of worked up too. Well, I did say some things about the Vice Squad, and you know those guys—they have you rubbed out. No one talks. There's that code of honor stuff going on there. I've seen the TV movies, Drew. That was one of your, your classic shows, Adam. I love that show. Thank you, Jason. This will be another classic if you uh, let us call this gal and straighten everything out. All right. All right, so we're going to put you on hold. Okay. And when we come back, we're going to talk to her and tell her to wear a condom. This is Matt. And this is Sherry, and we're from The Rentals. You're listening to Adam Carolla. And Dr. Drew on Loveline. Uh, phone number 1 800 L O V E 191, 1 800 568 3191. Fax number 310 854 4455. A show filled with peaks and valleys tonight. We've really ran the gamut between doing a great show and doing a crappy show, but I'm going to commit to this last 34 minutes. Of this hour. Of this hour. Of this day. This is going to be a great last 34 minutes. Ben, you're going to start it off. Oh, great. Um, I've been listening to your show for just a little while now. I just wanted to say I'm, I was pretty impressed with tonight's show. I think it's great that you're you know, taking and you're actively participating and helping us solve our problems here, calling up those girls' boyfriends and such. I thought that was pretty cool. Anything for money, Ben. <laughs> that is my motto. Well, that would be a great thing to do for a living. I would love that. But um, anyway, what I called about tonight was sort of a its personal issue. It's not really about my relationship, but um, more about my maturity level. Mm -hmm. I have this problem where I can't really seem to uh, look at like any other girl when I'm. I can only focus on one girl at a time. For instance, this is a problem. Um, <laughs> it's more of a curse, I'd say. Well. Really, okay, right now there's this one girl I'm going out with. She's seeing two guys. She's right. Seeing myself, and she's seeing her, I guess you call him her, her ex-ex-boyfriend. How does that make you feel? Um, I don't know. I guess I'm a bit intimidated, but uh, it really, you know, it's it's a gray area for me. Wait, wait, wait. You're intimidated. I'm intimidated. She's known him for a year and a half, and she's been dating me for less than a month, you know. Yeah. And... I don't know. So, Ben, your yeah. thing is is something is better than nothing. No. The, what it really is. It's is, not? No. Well, His thing is he pursues one thing at a time. Exactly. He gets a commitment to, to have a relationship with a person. Right. You, you've yeah. said actually I mean, stuff like some, this to me. Even if that person is dating a soccer team no. at well, the right. same time. And that's the, what's at issue here is, is, is he, your, your choices with whom you choose to pursue may be the issue here more than the fact or the way that you do it yeah I, well i'm the same way i mean y you know in in you know i may i may describe myself as a pig to, and many callers may believe i am by a lot of my opinion or you've been at times and i've been at times and I'll, I'll admit that i'm versatile i can i can go the swine route but what i'm saying is is i when i'm interested in somebody i'm interested in that one person and if i'm interested in them enough i don't want to go out with other people and I don't understand what is behind people wanting to go out 
with you know five people at once and and I understand it's exciting and I understand it makes them feel good and but I do think a lot of it is insecurity right it's it's a way of avoiding intimacy which uh, intimacy is what you really need to nourish yourself emotionally and that's too painful for some people that so what they didn't seem to be my problem really it's, that's right that's not your problem I it's mean, other I people's have problem a crush on I, right now I'm a senior in high school. Uh, my girlfriend says this is something I'm probably going to get over. It's a it's sort of a maturity issue is really what I'm calling about. Am this I is your positive? girlfriend? Yes. Your girlfriend who goes out with her old boyfriend? Yes. It's not really your girlfriend. Well, I, I kind of use that word a, little, a bit loosely. She's a chick in your poli-sci class. Um, no, actually, she's not. She's English not lit. School. No. Ceramics. No, I'm in high school. She's in college. <laughs> we don't even go to the same school. Older woman. Yes. All right. Uh, that's not the issue here, though. All right, get to the really, issue. Though, the thing is, like, I'll even have a crush on one girl, and I won't, and I won't even think about going out with anyone else. And this is—is is this some silly high school thing that I'm just going to get over, or is this possibly just the way I am, and I should just deal with it? Right, should we each have a crack at yeah, this? Yeah, I, I, I think that. Forward. I think that when you learn how to choose more appropriately and really develop a relationship, when you're in relationships, this will be an asset. I believe you will be able to interact in a sort of a more social dating kind of way with more than one person as you get older. Oh, so I think this will work. I think this will work itself yeah, out. Yeah, when it's appropriate. Yeah. I mean, when you have someone that's not dating half the freshman class. Then it's good that you only want to date right. her. And not to say that you can't date somebody who's dating other people. You'll be able to do that eventually. You you got to you have to learn how to sort of contain that that desire to connect with somebody. And it's do a it good impulse. I'll tell you what it is. It's like the atomic bomb. <laughs> now wait a minute. Not a bad thing if we're using it to keep mutually assured peace. Right. But is a bad thing when we drop it on, you know, like we test it on Bikini Island or something and move a bunch of natives off into some place where they just lead out their life gambling and drinking and, and lounging around watching daytime television. Now, I don't want to get into political is stuff. Is that where you used to live? Bikini Island? Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've moved all the inhabitants of Bikini Island into my living room now, and we all sit around, gamble, drink, and watch daytime oh, television. It. No, it, it, it can be a good thing, but it can also be a bad thing. And right now, Ben... It sounds like it's being used for evil, just a little bit. Yeah. Actually, so what, right here's now, what you. I think it's going pretty well. Right. You know, except for instance, this is really the person I'm interested in. This right. Right. No, it's in. going too well. There's too many guys. No, there's not. There's only there's only two guys. I mean, and I don't even know exactly. I don't think the other guy's even right. as close to her as I am. That's not. Listen, that's not it. Like for an instance. But you're not. What, your situation's good if you're getting together a softball game, Ben. <laughs> Do you understand? You're dating this person. Yes. This is not a good situation. I, I deem it bad. Okay. Listen, Ben. Yeah. Use the same focus that you're now using on this current relationship mm -hmm. and turn it towards someone else that you can get involved in who will be monogamous, who will, be, who will put the same focus on you as you put on them. That's all. That's all you want in a relationship. You want the same focus that you put into them, mm -hmm. into you, and then eventually same, into sex. Same commitment. Right. The same commitment. And me, I like a little more. Yeah. <laughs> Actually. Jason. Yes. Now, we got your... Uh, no, no, we don't got her. Oh, we don't. Oh. Oh. Incommunicado, the uh, note says. Mm. Apparently, they're having unprotected sex as we speak, and uh, the man's testicles probably swung around and knocked the phone off the hook or something. Yeah, something. Like a big mail sack, like a big hairy mail sack. All right, all right. Like a big, all right, swollen, all right, hairy right. pus fill. Huh? Come on. Okay. Calm down, Doc. Calm, calm down. I know. He's very prudish. You know why? It's his people's Sabbath. <laughs> <laughs> it's Sunday. Actually, it's not. Your people's Sabbath was yesterday, wasn't it? Yeah. It's my people's Sabbath. Sabbath, huh? Sabbath. Sabbath. All right, l let, let's not get into that. Like the black. Right. Jason. Yes. You care about both these people. Oh, very much. I would Since you think the girl has a plan, I would have your discussion with the male. Okay. Do you understand? Yeah. Tell him your idea. Tell him what you think is going on. Yeah. Don't come at him in accusatory fashion. Yeah. Let me tell you, talking your friends about, giving your friends advice is a lot like uh, the tagging polar bears. Right. You can't corner them and come after them. Mm -hmm. You got to sneak up on them. Eh, maybe not a polar bear, but let's say like a chimpanzee or something. You got to let them sniff your hand a little. Right. Make sure you wash it first. 
Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Don't come after them with a big net going, I got something to throw over you. Right. Bring it up. Let it come up organically, or at least have it seem like it came up organically. You know what I'm saying? In a non-threatening time? In a non-threatening way. All right. All right, Jason. Drew, where do you want to go this, besides this, home? This looks scary to me. Okay. Nikki. Hello? You're on Loveline. Hi. Um, yeah, I'm 13, and my um, boyfriend really wants me to give him head. And, I mean, a lot of people say it's not that bad, but, I mean, I'm like, I don't know if I want to because... Nikki, he... Nikki, mm -hmm. let, me, let me settle the question in your mind of whether or not you want to or not. Mm -hmm. You don't want to. Right? You don't want to, do you? Well, you don't want to. If you wanted to, you would have done it. I mean, then you wouldn't that's, call that's, us if you and wanted that's, to. And that's a good impulse. That's something you're not ready to do. I mean, you're not ready to do that yet. Don't do it. And it, to, to think that the guy is, how old is your boyfriend? He's almost 13. And he's manipulating you. He's almost 13? Mm -hmm. And he says, he, what, is, what is his well, rap? He's all, well, I, want, I feel like I'm empty because I want oh. to be close as I can. Oh, please. <laughs> oh, please. Uh -huh. Nikki, this is exactly what? what I was talking about when the show opened yeah. up. He, he wants to be, he wants to be. I would like to. I want to be close to you. I'd like to poke the roof of your mouth with my penis. I mean, oh, that's, yeah. that's just terrible. I mean, what you want, the kind of closeness that you want, he's not interested in. In fact, if he were, he would not be so cruel to well, you. Well, all right. Wait a minute. Hey, come Let's, on, that's cruel. Oh, that's cut terrible. Cut the guy a break. I, I am cutting him a break. He's 13. She's 13. Come on. All right. His hormones are going nuts. He's not thinking clearly. And he, he explained that. He thought, I'm like, well, what is it? He thought, he thought, well, if you want me to go down on you, I will. I'm like, well, I don't want you to. He's like, well, well, then just give me a head and I'll, you won't get anything then. Uh, well, that's a compromise. This guy's like Jimmy Carter with his negotiating skills. All right, well, just give me a blowjob. I won't give you anything. <laughs> there you go. Well, that sounds fair. Nikki, mm -hmm. here's the deal, and here's what I want everyone to do, especially women. And Drew and I were talking about this at the top of the show, so it is coming full circle to yes, this again. Yes. And this is everybody. This is everybody. All right, wait a minute. I got something to say. All you have is your instinct. That's all you have in this world. But that's what they're there for, by the way. That's what to your instinct's you. there. Right. Yes, that's all you have. When you're at work and you're thinking, I, I don't know, I don't like this job. I, I think I'm better than this. I think I can quit. I think I can move on. I think I could do better. The people that do do better are the people that listen to that voice and move on. The people who are losers in life are the people who stay where they are and don't listen to the voice. That's all you have. If you don't... If you can't rely on that, you're going through this world naked, like a like a like a snail without a shell. You know what I'm saying? Like a cop without a baton, mace, and a gun. Like a cop in a jockstrap. That's what you are working in South Central. That's all you have is that ability to trust your instincts. And when something doesn't sound right, and when something doesn't feel right, then it's not right. And you don't have to call a radio show to ask, although. We hope you do. You don't have to talk to your priest or your rabbi or your school counselor. If it doesn't feel right, if it doesn't feel like it's something you want to do, if it feels like a situation that you want to get out of, then get out of it. Then don't do it because that's all you have. And might as well start trusting it now. When you're younger, it's hard. And a lot of people don't listen to it until they're 40. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, they've killed five people, had 30 kids, and spent half the time in prison because they didn't listen. Mm -hmm. Listen to it. Okay, okay Nikki. He's telling you don't do it. It's a bad thing. All right. Okay. All right. All right. We'll be back. <laughs> Phone numbers here at Loveline one eight hundred L O V E one nine one. Fax number three one zero eight five four. Forty-four fifty-five, and now it's time to go back to the phones, Jennifer. Wait, did that again. Oh, really? Five. five. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Hello? Jennifer, you're on Loveline. I'm having a banner evening. Oh, me too. Good. I was being facetious, but go ahead. Um, yeah, I have a really, really big problem. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know, my little brother, he's, uh, he's bisexual. How old is he? He's 16. Mm -hmm. And he's decided he likes my boyfriend. And no matter what I do... Or anything, I cannot keep him away from him, and it's I don't know. What does that mean, keep him away? What does he do? He's always flirting with him, you know, just trying to get together with him. I don't know. What do you mean? You mean, but does your boyfriend know? He knows he's bisexual, but I don't know if he knows he's flirting with him or anything else. Guys can be pretty thick sometimes. I mean, they don't they don't know that sort of thing. Yeah, actually, guys, here, here's what guys are. 
<laughs> this is a great thing about guys. Guys, there's two types of guys. There's either guys who the guy is coming on to him. I mean, you know, he's on. He's like dry humping his leg, and this guy's watching Jeopardy and has no idea what's going on. Or there's a guy where the guy just walks past him and says, excuse me, he goes, that fag was coming on to me. I had to punch him out. But there's no intermediate guy. It's either the paranoid guy who thinks everyone is coming on to him and everyone's gay, or the guy doesn't notice anything. I'm the guy who doesn't notice anything, by the way. Well, maybe he doesn't notice anything, but I notice. And uh, I want to, you know, tell my brother, you know, it's, it's not cool. Why don't you say that? I don't know how. I was hoping maybe you could talk to him. All right. Would you like to talk to him? <laughs> we certainly would. All right. Um, well, then, hold on. Yeah. Make sure you knock before you go into his room. He could have, like, a cult roundup calendar spread open there, and it could be an embarrassing situation. Okay, hold on. Stuart, come in here. This is our Gonna Talk to a Gay Guy music. <laughs> Tequila. <laughs> hold on. He has no clue. It's great because this is like a background music from an Elvis movie, but it's a totally different topic. Bye Boy, starring Anne Margaret, Elvis Presley. I'm on the air. Watch your profanity. Oh, sorry about that. All right. Now, Jason? What's up? I thought you said Stuart. Jason, are you Jennifer's sister? I mean, I'm sorry. Jennifer, yeah. <laughs> that was a Freudian slip. Are you, are you, are you her half-sister? <laughs> are you her sister and her brother? Are you, yeah. are you her brother? Yeah. Yes, you're Jennifer's brother. Yeah. She cares about you quite a bit. Do you know that? Mm, sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah. Okay. She also cares about her boyfriend. Do you know that? I think so. I'm pretty sure about that. Right. Right. She feels like you care a little bit about her boyfriend, too. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Not a bad-looking guy? No, not really. Uh-huh. Yeah. Could probably bring me over to the dark side. <laughs> so... You're extra nice to this guy when he comes around. It depends. But most of the time. It depends. It depends on what? What he's wearing? Probably, yeah. And how long Jennifer's out of the room? Huh? And how long your sister's out of the room, am I right? Yeah. Okay. You realize this makes your sister, Jennifer, a little uncomfortable. No. You don't realize that? No. Have you ever seen this guy outside of uh, your sister's presence? Huh? Have you seen him anywhere else minus your sister? Like, what do you mean? Like you seeing him somewhere else minus your sister? Oh, yeah. All the time. All the time. Yeah. Well, the plot thickens. Like where? Mm, like when I'm at, like, I mean, sometimes I see him at the store. Uh-huh. But sometimes, sometimes we'll go out and do something. I don't know. Not really, though. Not really? Yeah. Well, do you go out and do stuff with him or not? Well, I thought about it. Yeah, well, look, I look. I thought about. <laughs> I thought about going out with Angelian for a number of years. Doesn't mean we went anywhere. <laughs> well. Did you go out with the guy or not? Like go out with him, like go to the movies or something. I, I'm asking you. Mm. Jason, did you go out with this guy somewhere, or not? No. No. Well. Okay. No. Okay, let's put no. Yes, no. we're going to put no down in that Why, why in that, are you putting no down if the answer is yes? Is the answer yes? The answer is yes, isn't it? Well, maybe we'll sometimes we'll go out and do something. Like what? Let me think. Well, last time we were out doing something. Watch your language. <laughs> Watch your language. Listen, Jason. What, what kind of stuff do guys wait, like wait, to I do? I want to ask something. Jason, are you not talking because Jennifer's overhearing you? I don't know. She's not in here. She's not? Nope. What the hell's wrong with you? We're asking a straightforward question. It's hard to talk about. I realize that, but the point is is we what need some... You, what did she tell you? Well, listen, the show's only two hours. Let me explain what's going on. Okay. This is your sister's boyfriend. Mm -hmm. You have an interest in him. Yeah. That's okay. And she senses that, and it makes her uncomfortable. And if you guys have something going on, you better, you better, somebody better come clean with your sister. Because, Do you uh, guys have anything going on? Me and my sister? No. I hope not. Don't play stupid, Jason. Oh, me and him? Yes. No, hold on a second, okay? What? Oh, never mind. Do you have any kind of relationship with this guy? No, I don't. You don't? All right. Never physical anything exchanged between you two? Uh-uh. Nothing more than loving glances? Yeah. Okay. Now, does this guy have any interest in you physically? 
What do you think? Mm, sometimes it looks at me pretty weird, but I have a feeling. Right, but you could just be conjuring that up in your own your own mind. I could be, but you know how it is. Someone likes you. Yeah. Sometimes you can tell, but sometimes you make you make it up in your mind too. But don't you have some desire to protect your sister if if this is what this guy's doing is He probably doesn't even like her anyway. She sometimes they get in fights all the time. Yeah, she likes him. All right. But she likes him a lot. And if she needs to be out of that relationship, maybe you ought to help her see what this guy is all about. And 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 I could I could make you this bet too because I think I'm sniffing Jason out. Your your sister could bring home Jack Klugman and you'd be all over him, wouldn't you? <laughs> Who? <laughs> Jack Clark. He's a big nose guy who was on uh, the, uh, the, odd the Odd Couple. Yes. I've never seen that. Point is, an older, unattractive guy. So you saying I'm attracted to all guys? I'm saying you're attracted. I'm saying you don't like your sister, and you're gonna you're gonna screw her <laughs> figuratively by by setting your sights on whoever she brings through the door. No, not yes, really. Yes, your little vindictive mother, aren't you, Jason? I could be. You could be. Of course, you are. <laughs> you are, and I'll tell you why you are. Why because am I? if you weren't vindictive, you would leave your sister's boyfriend alone. What? That's hey, true. This is a free world. Yeah, it's a free country. Oh, She's yeah. free to kick your ass up and down hey, the hall. Language? Watch your language. I can say what I want. It's my stinky show. <laughs> but but not only. My stinky telephone. But but. Uh, Jason. Yeah. It is inappropriate for you to be making eyes at your sister's boyfriend. If you like a guy, that's fine. Just as long as it's not your sister's boyfriend or a close family member. Everything else is fine. And Jennifer needs to get out of the relationship with that guy. I mean, she, Jennifer obviously herself makes some bad choices. Really? I mean, look, if the guy were worth a damn, he wouldn't. I mean, if you were dating some girl and his, her brother started coming on to you, would you not set the limit somewhere appropriate as opposed to well, kind of letting it go along for a while? Yeah. I mean, that, that's just, I mean, she's chosen a bad guy. To yeah, have we shouldn't be like taking our skateboards down to Chuck E. Cheese for the afternoon. No, that would be wow. uh, what a horrible situation. <laughs> that would be wrong. And and going along with the uh, gay sibling theme, Michelle. Yeah. Hey, Adam. Doctor Drew. Hey, okay. Michelle. Okay, I have this problem. That, that call was disturbing. I really called. Well, him. he was. He was disturbing. Yes. You guys ready for another disturbing call? Mm, I know I am. <laughs> okay. Well, here it goes. Um, uh, about a couple weeks ago, I was going through my sister's room and um, I found some letters. And they were lesbian letters about her and her best friend. And um, mm -hmm. and I've had the you know the thought that they were you know because I've walked in a couple times and I've caught them, you know, look like I caught them kissing and you know as soon as I open the door they jump back really quick, you know. And my me and my mom we asked her about it and she says no, you know that's sick. No, I'm not. Wait, wait, a M Michelle, who are you, McGruff, the uh, the lesbian sniffing dog? No. Well, what do you care? It's my sister. I care. Come on. You know, and, um, you know, I found some letters, and, you know, this says stuff like, I miss your body next to mine and all this stuff. You know, my sister is 14 years old. Oh, okay. See, and, um, that is something. Yeah, 14 years old, you know, and, um, you know, this girl is, like, bringing her down. Her grades are going down. She's going down. Mm. Yeah. How old? How old is her uh, her her young 14. lesbian friend there? Huh? Fourteen. They're both fourteen. Fourteen, huh? Wow. And and uh, what? Mm. And, and all right. Let's ask a few probing questions. The family's okay. No, uh, my family hates this girl. No, no, no. Yeah, but I mean, how's your family history? I mean, I don't mean uh -huh. drugs or whatever, but I just mean is uh, dad still around? Yeah. Everyone happy? Yeah. Everyone act nice. Yeah. You're you're pretty normal and all that stuff. Uh, yeah. Anything happened to your sister when she was younger? Um, no, nothing. Did you ever ask her? Have I ever asked her about her and her friend? No, about anything. Oh, yeah, from... we have a very open um relationship. Right. Right. Yeah, it's except a very, that, a very, except that she lies. A yeah. very trusting one. Yeah. Especially the way you rifle through her underwear drawer when she's out. <laughs> right. And she, and she lies about her sexual orientation. Yeah. Other than that, everything's on the table. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, see, Michelle, we're making fun of you in your relationship. You have to understand that. All right, listen. Mm -hmm. She's a little young for this activity. Uh-huh. Right. And, and well, but I, I, by the way, if, if she were getting letters like that from a boy, too, I think it would be pretty disturbing to Michelle. Yeah, because he, doesn't, he has a penis. 
Yeah, if it was. Oh, I see what you're saying. You mean at that age? Yes. Oh, okay. Right. No, no. I'm with you now. Yeah, here's the deal. Mm -hmm. She could be just, a, you know, a lesbian at birth. Right. And this could be her life. Right. I mean, she could go on to open a, a, a sandal shop in Venice and, and get married to someone and, you know, go follow the PGA, LPGA tour, and that could be it. This could be her life. But either way, she's getting started a little early, and that's where the concern is. Yeah, you know, if she is, you know, it's cool by me because, you know, I have nothing against, you know. Right, right. But You're I just concerned about her. Yes, I'm very concerned. All know. right, I understand that. All right, I would, I would bring, as long as your mom is not going to burst her bubble, leave Dad out of this by the way okay mm -hmm. leave him out unless he's just the greatest dad in the world uh no no okay well, good no, is this where part of the problem is in this family though what, yeah what, but what? We, we don't have time to unearth every yeah. every difficulty this family's having listen michelle yeah. you and mom are the team right yeah. leave let dad uh, drink the the paps tall boys in the living room and watch uh watch entertainment tonight all right all right you and mom hook up you pull her aside and just say listen what you we love you what you choose to do, uh, your your sexual orientation is fine with us. We're just scared that you're getting started a little bit too young, and it's only because we love you so much that we're concerned. We have told her she she denies it. Yeah, but now you can break through that tonight. But now now you know. All right, and try not to be real accusatory, and just as uh, Doctor Viscount would say, my friends, come from love. Well. We're heading down the back straightaway. We're turning the corner, and we're coming in. We're coming in. We're, we're, we've rounded third. Hey, listen, before we uh, hit that third base. Uh, no, we've rounded I'm third. Sorry, we're I'm, heading oh, for yeah. home. Before right, we do yeah. the head first slide. I, I just wanted to say that that last call, the 14-year-old with, with the lesbian relationship, and that, indeed, Adam was right. It could be just somebody who is going to be lesbian as, as their lifestyle choice. But I really worry about those kinds of relationships, even, even early heterosexual relationships. You've got to understand that the most common form of, of childhood sexual abuse right now is children on children. In other words, they could have initiated this relationship when they were 10 or 11 or 12, Maybe the other friend had been sexually abused. It, it just, now, it just I'm, I'm no, circumstances bother me, that's all. And there's just no, people need to be aware of it, that's all. I'm no sociologist, Drew. Yeah, yeah, but, but I'm thinking that's a bad sign. What's that? Well, that, that the, the most, most popular abuse is like eight-year-olds fingering eight-year-olds. It, I mean, that's kind of a bad sign it, from a societal it, standpoint, it, it, isn't horrible. it? Unbelievable. That's bad when Fat Uncle Lou is jumping on top of the eight-year-old. When Fat Uncle Lou does that to the eight-year-old, when that eight-year-old is 14, that 14-year-old does it to a bunch of eight-year-olds. Right. Those eight-year-olds eight -year then become 11 and 12. They do it to a bunch of eight-year-olds, and we have an exponential growth of And I'm stuff. sure Fat Uncle Lou was fingered at some inappropriate by an adult typically point in but right his now life. yeah by an adult but typically now we have got young people doing it to young people which it, i'm saying sounds bad horrible horrible I, that's why if you have i'm going to raise my kids in, a, in, a, in an aquarium like turtles do you understand that i'm going to will you build that for my I'm kids gonna raise them in you a, can use it we're done i got a tremendous mason jar and i'm just going to poke air holes in it and put them down in there like the uh, some sort of little mock-up of Mayberry. You don't know how appealing that is. <laughs> Doesn't it sound yeah, good? Yeah, it sounds wonderful. I'm going to raise my kid like Veal. I'm just going to trap him in a dark room and never let him out. But that's not abuse, is it? No. That, that's you see, realism. I don't want them to experience any part of life. <laughs> Okay, speaking of experience in life, I want to thank Sam, Laurie, Sherry, Anne, and the lovely one, well, one sack, one testy Mike. I'd like to thank Dr. Drew. Drew, read the, read the address real fast. P.O. Box 4345, Hollywood, California, 90078, or email LUV191 on AOL. We'll be back with Stan Lee, the inventor of Spider-Man, tomorrow night. Until then, I'm Adam Carolla. I'm Dr. Drew. God bless you. So that's it, then. Opinions expressed on Loveline by Adam Carolla, Dr. Drew, or anyone are not necessarily ours. Be happy. Be happy. Happy, happy, happy. I'm happy. Loveline's producer is Ann Wilkins. Thank you.